Before we start this video subscribe this channel and click the bell icon to get the latest update and get some awesome knowledge about this world. Early life and political career. In high school, Erdogan became known as a fiery orator in the cause of political Islam. He later played on a professional football, soccer, team and attended Marmara University. During this time he met Nekmet and Erbakan, a veteran Islamist politician, and Erdogan became active in parties led by Erbakan, despite a ban in Turkey on religiously based political parties. In 1994 Erdogan was elected mayor of Istanbul on the ticket of the Welfare Party. The election of the first ever Islamist to the mayoralty shook the secularist establishment, but Erdogan proved to be a competent and canny manager. He yielded to protests against the building of a mosque in the city's central square but banned the sale of alcoholic beverages in city-owned cafes. In 1998 he was convicted for inciting religious hatred after reciting a poem that compared mosques to barracks, minarets to bayonets, and the faithful to an army. Sentenced to 10 months in prison, Erdogan resigned as mayor. After serving four months of his sentence, Erdogan was released from prison in 1999, and he re-entered politics. When Erbakan's Virtue Party was banned in 2001, Erdogan broke with Erbakan and helped form the Justice and Development Party Adale ve Kalkanma Party C, AKP. His party won the parliamentary elections in 2002, but Erdogan was legally barred from serving in parliament or as prime minister because of his 1998 conviction. A constitutional amendment in December 2002, however, effectively removed Erdogan's disqualification. On March 9, 2003, he won a by-election and days later was asked by President Ahmet Nekde Seza to form a new government. Erdogan took office on May 14, 2003. Prime Ministership As Prime Minister, Erdogan toured the United States and Europe in order to dispel any fears that he held anti-Western biases and to advance Turkey's bid to join the European Union. Although the previous government had refused to allow US troops to be stationed in Turkey during the Iraq War, in October 2003 Erdogan secured approval for the dispatch of Turkish troops to help keep the peace in Iraq. Iraqi opposition to the plan, however, prevented such a deployment. In 2004 he sought to resolve the issue of Cyprus, which had been partitioned into Greek and Turkish sectors since a 1974 civil war. Erdogan supported a United Nations plan for the reunification of the island. In April 2004, Turkish Cypriots approved the referendum, but their Greek counterparts rejected it. Tensions between Turkey's secularist parties and Erdogan's AKP were highlighted in 2007 when attempts to elect an AKP candidate with Islamist roots to the country's presidency were blocked in parliament by an opposition boycott. Erdogan called for early parliamentary elections, and his party won a decisive victory at the polls in July. In early 2008 parliament passed an amendment that lifted a ban on the wearing of headscarves, a sign of religion long contested in Turkey, on university campuses. Opponents of the AKP renewed their charges that the party posed a threat to the Turkish secular order, and Erdogan's position appeared to come under increasing threat. In March the Constitutional Court voted to hear a case that called for the dismantling of the AKP and banning Erdogan and dozens of other party members from political life for five years. Erdogan successfully maintained his position, however, when in July 2008 the court ruled narrowly against the party's closure and sharply reduced its state funding instead. In September 2010 a package of constitutional amendments championed by Erdogan was approved by a national referendum. The package included measures to make the military more accountable to civilian courts and to increase the legislature's power to appoint judges. While campaigning for parliamentary elections in early 2011, Erdogan pledged to replace Turkey's constitution with a new one that would strengthen democratic freedoms. In June 2011 Erdogan secured a third term as prime minister when the AKP won by a wide margin in parliamentary elections. However, the AKP fell short of the two-thirds majority needed to unilaterally write a new constitution. In the summer of 2013, Erdogan faced an outpouring of public discontent after Istanbul police violently broke up a small protest against the planned conversion of a public park into a shopping complex. The incident triggered larger demonstrations around the country decrying what protesters described as the growing authoritarianism of Erdogan and the AKP. Erdogan responded defiantly, dismissing the protesters as thugs and vandals. Presidency. First term and coup attempt. 
barred by AKP rules from seeking a fourth term as Prime Minister, Erdogan instead ran for the largely ceremonial role of President in 2014. In accordance with the constitutional amendments of 2007, the 2014 election was the first time that the President was elected directly, rather than by the Parliament. Erdogan won easily in the first round of voting and was inaugurated on August 28, 2014. Immediately upon taking office, Erdogan began to call for a new constitution following parliamentary elections in 2015, it was widely believed that he would seek to expand the powers of the presidency. In June 2015 the AKP failed to win a parliamentary majority for the first time since its formation, receiving just 41% of the vote. The result was generally seen as a blow to Erdogan's plans for an expanded presidency, but the reversal proved to be a brief one. In November 2015, the AKP easily won back its parliamentary majority in a snap election triggered by the failure of negotiations to form a governing coalition after the June election. In the summer of 2016, Erdogan survived a violent coup attempt. On the night of July 15, a small number of military personnel occupied streets in Ankara and Istanbul and seized facilities, including television stations and bridges. The coup plotters accused Erdogan and the AKP of undermining democracy and damaging the rule of law in Turkey. Erdogan, who had been vacationing on the Aegean coast, rushed back to Istanbul, using social media to mobilize his supporters. The coup plotters were soon overpowered by loyal military units and civilians, and the government quickly regained control. Nearly 300 people, mostly civilians, were killed in confrontations during the coup. Over the weeks that followed, the government carried out a massive purge, removing tens of thousands of soldiers, police officers, teachers, and civil servants from their jobs and imprisoning others for their alleged sympathies with the coup. Second term and expansion of powers. Erdogan's desire for the expansion of presidential powers came to fruition in April 2017. Sweeping changes to the constitution that would abolish the post of the prime minister and empower the president as the executive head of government were put to a referendum and passed by a narrow majority. The changes were set to be implemented after the next election cycle, initially planned for November 2019. Early elections were called, however, and on June 24, 2018, Erdogan won a majority of the vote for the office of president. Upon being inaugurated on July 9, he assumed the expanded presidential powers. Erdogan's economic policies in the coming months, combined with U.S. tariffs levied against Turkish steel and aluminum exports, led Turkey into recession. By mid-August, the lira had lost a quarter of its value, and the slowdown in economic growth continued into 2019. Soaring prices on basic goods, which Erdogan blamed on a foreign conspiracy, became a central issue in municipal elections held in March. For the first time since the AKP gained ascendancy in 2004, election results showed that the party had lost its hold on five major cities, including Ankara and Istanbul, dealing a major blow to Erdogan's national agenda. Thanks for watching our videos. Please like and share with your family and friends and tell us which topic you want to know.